I'll just wait till Alan gets past you. I'm watching this dance move. Oh, so it's your shoulder that does. <laughs> Hello, my Hello, my name is Michael, and I'm the head mechanic here at Team Cycles in Newcastle. Today, we're going to show you how to assemble a bike out of a box if you've bought it on our online store. We're going to show you how to unpackage it, how to assemble it, what tools you need, and what it looks like at the finishing product. And if you have ordered on our online store, this is how your bike will land at your door. Exactly like that. However, let's show you what tools you need to put this bike together. All right, tools, Allen key set. Basically, this will put most of your bike together. There's not a lot on your bike that this little tool can't do. It's got everything from a one and a half mil Allen key to a six mil Allen key. The only thing it won't do is the crank bolts but this little tool is a must to assemble this bike. So we'll pop that there. You're definitely gonna need one of them. Next tool is a pedal spanner and it is there. So it's a 15 mil pedal spanner. You'll need this to put your pedals on. Sometimes some of our bikes will come with a pedal and it might be able to have a six mil Allen key hole on the back of it. So you could possibly use this tool as well. But if it hasn't, this is the fella. Now, the good thing with this pedal spanner is it's quite slim. So sometimes a standard 15 mil spanner won't fit between the crank arm and the pedal. You'll need a pedal spanner. So you can buy these tools at any bike shops up and down the nation. So if you want to, you should always have one of these in your drawer anyways to make sure your bike's safe and tightened. Pedal spanner, now and again, you might want to swap your pedals. So it's a good thing to have. We'll pop that up there. Cable ties, it might come with cable ties on the packaging. We we'll try not to do with Team Cycles. We we'll try to use tape, our packing tape. Um, it's just the problem with cable ties, they can damage your frame. So you might need a pair of snips now and again to cut some of the cable ties off the pipe lagging just to help assemble it. So that's pretty much your tools. Oh, tire pressure. We do inflate our tires when we assemble the bikes in the warehouse. So we do actually take these bikes out and fully build them, then take them back apart, package it all up, put them back in the boxes, and then ship them out to you guys. However, some inner tubes that have the little Presta valves on there, they can leak a little bit of air out, so you might want to top them up. Go get yourselves a decent track pump. Don't use one of those old school kind of hand pumps from back in the day. You'll be there forever. You'll never ride your bike. So just get a decent track pump, keep on top of the tire pressures, and you'll have a good time. That's pretty much it. Four, three tools and a pump is all you'll need to put this bike together. So we're happy. You know what tools you need now. Let's get cracking. We'll show you how to put this together. So this is how the bike's gonna land, boxed. Packaging tape on there. We're gonna go into it, rip it open, show you what it's like, how it comes out the box. However, get yourself a nice place to build it, clear all the space, you know, get yourself a nice little workshop ready. If you've got somewhere to put your tools on like a bench, go for it. As you can see, we've got these lovely big work stands here, but not everybody's got uh, these sitting in the garages or in the sheds or wherever they're gonna build it. So we're gonna do this old school. We're gonna build it how you would build it when you were a kid. We'll get the bike out of the box and we're gonna chop the box up and we're gonna use that as our workstation. All right? Forgot to say you might need a Stanley knife to get into this box. So if you've got one, use it. So this is how the bike arrives. We'll cut it open. Let's get inside, show you what it's all about. You'll have two boxes, maybe just one box, but they'll have like um, your sales receipt in there, uh, pedals, possible reflectors. Stick them to one side, because we'll be needing them later on. Again, bits are off the bike. You see post, so stick that there on your bench, on your workshop. And now for the bike, we're gonna take this out back wheel comes out first it's a bit easier and then give it a good heave ho and out it comes we'll just pop this up against the wall got a bench just make sure that's secure here's my front wheel got a little discard on there so that doesn't scratch any of your paint just check that there's nothing else in the box other than bits of cardboard we'll shift that out of the way and that's how your bike's gonna come. 
got the pipe lagging on there to protect it all like I say we don't use any cable ties so it's all got packing tape on there wheels there ready to go so let's get into it right what we're gonna do now is we'll pop this out the way for a second because we're gonna make a nice little work area on the floor we're gonna chop this box make it a workstation just in case we lose any little nuts and bolts we've got them on this cardboard flooring that we're going to make it also stops any scratches or any damage into the bike you might not have a nice soft floor like we do so you might be building it outside for all we know um, chop your box up use it as a workstation and make your life a lot easier get a good st sharp standing knife we'll just cut down the sides of the boxes and this is just so we've got something to work on again We've got these nice workstations here and a nice work floor, but if you're building it where you haven't and you lose a little screw out of somewhere or some little part, and yeah, everybody knows they travel for miles, you know. So if you build yourself a nice little work area to sit the bike on, hopefully you'll not lose anything. That's it. You want chop that end off. Throw that over there, we don't need that. There's your workstation. So we can put the bike on there, take parts off it. If we lose anything, it's bright. Everything on these bikes is like black bolts, so it should show pretty easy on there. And uh, hopefully you don't lose anything, but you know, never say never. Now let's get this bike built and show you how it's done. We've got our workstation set, means we've got somewhere nice to work on, it's nice and clean, there's no rubbish anywhere, we're going to create such a mess in a second taking this packaging off, but basically, pop your wheel against there because we don't need that at the moment, grab your bike, good thing with the cardboard is, you hear the click, the forks sort of just pop into the cardboard and it stands itself up, now if you've got a work stand at home, use it that's what the four we've got three of them here so if you have got a work stand quick release lever pull the lever back slide that in as you can see we've got some grease on there because we've we've already assembled these bikes in our warehouse try the lever for tension so pop it in close it it should go with a good clamp but if you can twist the seat you just want to do slacken that off and twist this other side so it's got a threaded end on so if you just give that a little turn solid now if you've got a work stand you'll know how to put bikes into work stands because obviously you've done it on your own bike or you've done it with your friend's bike but if you haven't turn it around lift it up the clamps in there clamp it in and then your bikes freestanding and you can get on with it however we're not going to do that we're building it old school so we're going to show you how to take it all apart we're going to put the handlebars in next We'll have to take off some of the packaging to get on with this but i might leave little bits on just so we don't drop any allen keys on or chip any parts of the frame whilst we're assembling this so we'll leave this part on but this we need to take off we'll throw that out of shot because we don't need it anymore you'll notice the forks run backwards so just remember that some of our bikes just to put them in the boxes we'll have to rotate the fork backwards but you'll know it's on the wrong way around because this brace will be pointing the frame and it wants to point the other way outwards so basically flip it round and you'll be fine the stem four bolts four mil allen key so we need a friend here just to help achieve this job what we're about to do today so when you're undoing it some of these will be finger tight so you won't need that to take them out but make sure you get this little little washer that's on there and they'll all come with that so again the good thing with we're using the cardboard matting as you can see it's going nowhere and you can see where it is because it's 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 light and the bolts are black most of the bikes come with black bolts now so we'll just take these out like so pop them down there now we're handlebars got these little indication lines on so that's to make sure that you get the handlebars bang in the middle of the bike so when we put them on if the cables come crossed up or anything like that you'll, you'll see how the cables will curve around the, the frame so they'll curve around this head tube so they'll sit we don't need that they'll sit quite nicely 
like so. And the reason that they do it this way is so the cables don't scuff the paint off your uh, your new frame. So grab a clamp with the bolt in, make sure it's got that little washer on. Just start that off with your fingers and you'll know it's going in. Make sure it goes in straight as well so you don't strip any threads. The good thing using your fingers is if you can't tighten it with your fingers, sometimes it's not gone in straight. So we'll just start that. And the other clamp. Right, we're away. So there we are. The handlebars are in. They're loose still, so we'll need a 4mm Allen key. And then little lines. So I'm just going to turn this so you can see. There's my indication line. So you just want the same number on the outside of the clamps on each side. So when you're happy with that, just try and, with one hand, hold it get your allen key set and start off now we're going to do this evenly so a couple of turns on the top one a couple of turns on the bottom one because we want the right spacing tops and bottoms keep an eye on the lines so mine's moved and just give it a little rotate and there we are we're aligned again and then start on the other clamp so they're going in straight a couple of turns The good thing with using a small little allen key like set like this, for one, it's got all the allen keys on there, but these big allen keys, some people tighten stuff up far too much and they can strip the thread. So once you're happy that you've got the right gap on the tops and bottoms, put the allen key at the top, just do a quarter of a turn each time. So 12 o'clock to three o'clock, basically, and that'll just get you the right amount tension on them bolts if you've got a torque wrench most of our bikes now will come with the recommended torque settings on there so you could go down that route uh, and it's nice to know that you've got everything torqued up correctly if you haven't most local bike shops will sell them and like i said before there the good thing with this little allen key set is you don't have these big ones where you can snap a bolt head or you can strip a thread straight away so that's there that's starting to get pretty tight so you know you're you're safe when you're getting to that level and again just double check them all now that's showing good resistance nice and tight and you'll feel the bolts will stop so there we are handlebars are on same lines on each side nice gaps at the top nice gaps at the bottom some of our bikes will come with a sticker if it has a sticker on you'll tighten these till the clamps touch each other and then this bottom one will tension the bolts and then keep everything tight so once that's on that's lovely back sweep you can set this when you get your bike built so you'd have the slacking off these bolts and you'd rotate the handlebars to where you feel comfortable now when, once it's built we'll go through it later if you're sitting on the bike your arm will run straight down hit the handlebars and then the brake lever would run with your handlebars and your arms so it'll all run in a nice angle like a nice straight line through there so that's one way of setting up the handlebars for the sweep um, it's personal preference everybody's different everybody has their bikes set up differently but we're just going to show you how to assemble it today so once you're happy with that that's all sorted you've got the right lines you've got the right gaps we'll get the front wheel in we're going to leave this packaging on though because if you're building this bike outside and the wind catches it and it falls over the last thing you want to do is chip the frame chip the paint uh, before you've even ridden the thing so we'll get the two boxes that we took out the bike box before that'll have a quick release skewer in and we'll show you how you install that and we'll get that sorted for you handlebars are on we're now going to put the front wheel on comes with this little plastic protectors these are just basically to stop them scratching the frame whilst they're in there Pop them off, again, throw them one side, stick them in the bin, do whatever you want with them. So once you've got that like that, that's there. Grab your little box that we had in the big bike box. Quick release skewer. So we need that now. It's got two springs on there. So I'm gonna show you which way them two springs go. You can see already that when the guys have packaged it, they've put it the right way. So you would unscrew this. 
So keep the springs like so. This is where it's going to get a little bit more hooldy on if you haven't got a bike stand like I was saying earlier on. If you come down to the brake caliper, these brakes are hydraulic so to stop the pads being clamped together if it gets knocked in the box we'll put these little pad spaces in there so make sure you remove that or you're going to have a right nightmare trying to put that wheel with that disc in there with that in there so again pop that in the bin or to one side if you want to hang on to it right the side for levers there's no real side but what i try and do is i have the levers on the same side so if you your bike will always have the lever on the left so it's out the way of the derailleur so again, put the lever side on the disc side. Now your spring, if the springs fall off, as you can see, it's like a little cone. So some people think that that sits over the top of that, but it doesn't because then the problem with that is it doesn't sit into the fork properly. So that side goes against there. So your spring would go straight down and it will sit in the recess of this little collar so make sure it's like that and it's exactly the same on the other side so once you've done that pop that in again small side first then the spring will sit in that recess the reason that is that needs to sit perfectly in the center of the fork or your wheel will sit offset or it'll not fit at all lift it up again if you've got mates or anybody around helping you or watching you trying to put your bike together get them involved they can hold on to the bike for you so I've got no mates so I'm just gonna struggle see how the bikes moving the good way of doing it this way is you know that gravity's taking effect here and the weight of the bikes pushing the wheel in the center so you're not building it on an angle where the wheel and the brake can be offset to get the tension it's basically the same as the seat post hold this side spin the lever and then when you're going to try it for tension you lift the lever and you don't want to be like pushing hard because the problem is if you're pushing hard like this you're pushing a lot of pressure on the bearings and these wheels will be ball bearings in there so you put a lot of pressure on these but you can also force it into place and then the disc can be too far to one side so you'll always get a, a brake rubbish so rule of thumb Slacken that off again, take a little bit of pressure off, try it again, and it should, it should close easy. Now, you might not have enough tension on there, so what you've got to then do is you shouldn't really be able to do that with your finger. So I'll show you that again. See how I can just open that with one finger with very little effort. So it's a case of just fine tuning. So that's nice and tight. So once you're happy with that tension, just open it up again, push down, make sure that's in the center, and then close the lever. Now, again, people have different areas. Someone might want their lever facing upwards so they can get a good grip onto it. If they get a puncture, some people will have the lever pointing back towards the caliper. See, the problem is if it's near the caliper, if you get a puncture, it's, it's hard to try and get your fingers in there. And especially if it's a cold, wet winter day, especially up here in the northeast so just get it so you can actually get all your grip to open the lever up some people put it up against the fork leg and they're coming for repair and where we've got screwdrivers in there or we're trying to get things in madness so just get to put it in a position where you can get your hands in and give it a good pull and it'll make your life easier if you do need to take the front wheel off uh, in the wet and miserable weather so once that's in lift it give it a spin as you can hear, there's no rubbing. So it's nice and quiet. You know that the wheel's sitting in the center. Give the brake a pull, no rubbing. So like I said, these bikes are fully assembled in our warehouse. So we'll build these things right, the right out the door, then take it all back apart, put it in boxes. So if you've got the right tension on here, silence. If you haven't, you might hear the disc. So just have a look at it. If it is catching, again, we're Allen key set. This starts to get a little bit more involved. You've got these little bolts on the back of the caliper. Now with this being hydraulic, you can slacken off these bolts. 
So just give them a little twist and a little twist. And then what you do up at the lever side, you'd pump the lever a couple of times and that'll centralize it. Then hold the lever in place and again, just give that a little nip and then again, quarter and turn and you'll feel a build of pressure. So we've got a little bit of noise there. What we're gonna do is this is good to show you is how to adjust it if you need to adjust it at home. Again, get your Allen key, five millimeter. Just slacken off the bolt. Just give it a little adjustment, hold that in place, and then just give that a little nip. And then that's that. Silence, well a little bit of rubbing. But we can't always be perfect on the first go, can we? So you'd fine tune it if it's moving. So as I said, we build these in the factory. As you see, when we first put it in, it was set up perfect. Now it's not to say it could be knocked in the box. We do we try our very best not them to get knocked, but if it does make noises, it's a case of just fine tune it. If you're not up for doing things like that, take it to your local bike shop, they'll centralize the caliper, they'll set it all up and make sure that it's not rubbing. They shouldn't rub because they're hydraulic, so they'll, uh, they'll centralize themselves. But if it's really bad, don't, don't have a go. Take it to your bike shop and see what they say. But as you've seen there, just quick little adjustment with a Allen key head. Just look down the caliper. You'll see a little gap. And then you can just nip them up. And you just want it to be quiet. You don't want any, oh, you don't want any rubbing on there. Once you're happy, tighten that up. Your wheel's tight, your caliper's adjusted if it needs adjusting, you're happy. And now we can get on to fitting some pedals. And then finally, remove all the packaging and we can go for a ride. Right, handlebars are done, front wheel's on. Hopefully you haven't had to do the uh, caliper adjustment, it's just went on and everything's happy and life's great. If you have had to do the caliper, you've just saw us how you manually adjust it. So we're now gonna, Fit the pedals onto the bike. So again, back to a little box. Should just bring this down here, yeah, make my life easier. Here's my pedals. Right, so, pedals. We'll get so many people coming in with stripped crank arms and pedals on bikes at weird angles and it feels like you bent something, but most people just haven't put the threads in properly, so. You've got a left and a right. It's literally got it written on the crank, on the pedal axle for you. So right hand side's obviously the gear inside. So if you were riding your bike, it would be on the right hand side, left hand side, disc side, if you've got discs on your bike. So when we're putting these on, as you can see from earlier on, we need the 15 mil spanner because we don't have the Allen key insert on the back. So we'll get, we're gonna do an additional video of what greases to use. So we'll go through that, but what I would use on these, because it's a thread and it's fixed into place, would be anti-seize, but we'll, we'll go through that in a different video. So keep tuned for that one. So make sure you picked up the right-hand side pedal. Crank arm. Some people would screw it backwards and they would feel a click. So you'll feel a click straight away there. You can hear it. That means that the, the thread's finding the starting thread, it's jumping into place. And then again with your fingers, just turn it. If you can't tighten it with your fingers, there's obviously something wrong. So just start again and, and try it again. Make sure you've picked up the right hand pedal or the left hand pedal, whichever side you're starting on first. And just tighten that up until it stops. Grab your pedal spanner. If you haven't got one, you could try a standard 15 mil spanner, but like I was saying earlier on, they're quite tight between the crank arm and the plastic pedal housing so it might not fit where that one you can see fits perfectly so again if you've got some mates get them to help you out here just hold them the bike whilst you do it i've got no friends obviously so start at the top push down now that's a huge thread in there you'd have to be like thor or some world's strongest man to strip that by over to tightening it you know but don't try there's different sizes of pedal spanner. So here in the shop, 
I've got these. This one comes out when people haven't put anti-seize on the threads and the thing's seized solid into the bike. So if you do use that one, you can get a good bit of leverage on it and you can tighten them up beyond what you need to. So try not buy that one. This little one, Park Tool PW5, is perfect for the job because you can't over tighten it. Keep the bike upright, like I showed you before, and just push down and it'll stop. You know, you're, you're requiring some effort to tighten that up. And again, on the left hand side, if I bring this round for you, you might see. Till it starts, and there it goes. And again, just use your fingers, and then you know it's tight. It's going in perfect on the threads. It's not cross-threaded. You're not swinging off it to try and get the pedal started. If you're having to use the pedal spanner to start the pedal off, you've obviously done something wrong, so stop whatever you're doing, start again. I take it to your local bike shop, get them guys to have a look at it before you write off the crank arm. And then you're uh, sending us an email saying something's not right with your bike and where saying have you watched more video that we've just made showing you how to put pedals on so again on at the top push down you'll feel resistance give it a little dip that's it your pedals are on you've not stripped any threads nice and tight you've used the right grease which we'll cover in a later video so watch out for that one we've got all the key components on now as you can see, we well, wheels on, pedals are on, handlebars are on. We've left the packaging on just so we don't scratch anything. You can start taking this off, get Stanley the knife because my salad tape is quite good. So once you start taking this off, now we had some, we'll have some people leave this packaging on, this plastic packaging. Don't take it off. It's just there to stop it from getting scratched. So it just unhooks and I'll show you. There's a little recess for the gear cable for it to sit in, so you just click it out of the way, and that's it. You, that's how your rear derailleur or your rear mech should look. It shouldn't have this big bit of plastic covering it for you. So once you've removed all the packaging, you can go for a ride. But again, with the pedals, you've got a right-hand side. If you're sitting on the bike, your drivetrain's on the right, your brakes are on the left. So just remember that for your pedals. Right for the R and they've got them written on the back of the pedal so you can't get it wrong and use some anti-seize uh, and you'll not have a trouble taking them off later on in life. There we are. That's it, we're done. Hopefully you have um, picked up some tips and tricks of what to do when you're assembling one of our bikes out the boxes. Everything's done. We can now go out and ride a new bike that we've just assembled. Uh, like I said, it, all the way through the video, anything that you get stuck with though, don't just have a go at it. Take it to your local bike shop, get them to have a look at it properly, or give us a call at Team Cycles. We'll, uh, we'll try and talk through all of the uh, questions that you've got. But as you can see, try the rock and roll. Let's go see what it's like. Ride safe. Cheers. Just looked into the sun. Are you good? Nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring one before. Hey, God.